Hello YouTubes. Today I want to talk about locks. So I've been looking online at all the prop houses and the special effects houses and the selection of locks sucks. Uh, so I took it upon myself to see what I could come up with and I made this little guy. Just like a mimic from uh, Dungeons and Dragons, an old school creature. Uh, it's basically just a block of wood. I covered it in clay, sculpted it and baked it. And this is just a plastic hanger end I chopped up that I got from the dollar store package of hangers. And I think I'm going to use those as the uh, actual locking mechanism on the lock. And I think what I'm going to do later is put a little screw back here that screws right into the plastic hanger. So you can actually use it, take it out, put a chain in there, chain whatever up you want, and then put it back on, put the screw in. So it'll actually be a working lock. You can change it around and put it on uh, different uh, props and other creatures. But... Uh, Nobody carries good locks. Amazon's locks suck. Um, I haven't seen anything cool anywhere else, so challenge accepted. I'm gonna start making some locks. Uh, I got this little guy done. Um, and the other day I took out some, uh, just some little plain index cards and I got to sketching, so I'll show you what I did. Alrighty, so I took out my plain little business cards or postcards, whatever they were, and I just kind of folded them in half and just doodled and did a bunch of sketches and this is kind of what I came up with I got sort of a little uh, wishbone style lock I got more of a tombstone style lock and I wanted them kind of oversized and cartoony looking so they look big and menacing um, I got this little guy I don't really know what kind of shape this is uh, this one's gonna be a sort of a uh, sun and moon style lock Thought that was pretty cool. I've never seen anything that shape before. And I'm gonna make one that's like a demon headlock. So I had a bunch of uh, old boards laying around. A piece of poplar. Uh, I think I had it from a shelf or I don't know what the hell I had it from. But I always went to my little scrap bin and saved your scraps. They always come in hand, uh, handy for later. I got my designs marked out. I used my little hand jigsaw and I jigsawed out a bunch of different lock shapes. There's my little wishbone. There's my tombstone lock. This is that little guy. Sun and moon. And the demon lock. And I was kind of experimenting on what to use for a locking mechanism. And this is just a piece of bent fuel line. The same one I used when I made my meat hook video. It's hollow. It's lightweight. But I don't think I necessarily need to use steel brake line or steel uh, fuel line for the locking mechanism. So I think my next step is, like my Mimic lock, I'm gonna take these guys, I'm gonna cover them in clay, because you can bake this stuff and put it in the oven, and do my different layering and whatever my faces and designs are gonna be, then I'm gonna bake it. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and mold these guys so I can make multiples, and then I'm probably gonna use plastic hangers, drill out the tops and all of them, so we can actually have a working, usable prop lock that you can change around and put on different props uh, over the years for Halloween or for whatever. And something that looks believable and looks cool than the crappy shit they saw on Amazon. So, I think we should just go ahead and start putting some clay on stuff. Alrighty, so I got my little uh, lock here. I'm just gonna go ahead and work right on the foil. I use my uh, salad dressing bottle to roll me out a nice flat piece of fresh sculpey clay, which I'll cover that, but first, I want to just go ahead and brush the whole face of this with some uh, bacon bond. That way it'll bond in the oven and I'll do one bake on this and then I can go ahead and come back with more clay on top of this one and do details. So I'll brush that all out. I'm going to go right over the hole and the edges, doesn't matter. So I'm going to sand this again later. Alright, everything looks covered. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy on there. Let's see the easiest way it covers. Something like that. Put a little dimple for where my lock cylinder hole is going to be. Alright, you can roll it out like that. That's cool. I'll cut off the excess later. Now I think I'm going to use a little bit of crumble tin foil. This will be my little base layer at the back of this lock to be uh, Look like a piece of pitted metal and old school steel. Give it kind of a lot of texture and make it look old and freaking gnarly like locks should be. 
Not that cutesy crap they sell on Amazon. I just can't believe how horrible there is like no locks on the internet. All the prop houses don't have anything good. This will soak up uh, uh, washes. It'll look good with dry brushes. So now that that's nice and crusty, I'll go ahead and I'll trim the edge off and then I'll throw some details on this thing. I'll probably use some uh, little BBs to look like rivets and poke those in down there. Uh, dress up my keyhole a little bit and then we'll call this one done and move on to another one. All right, got lock number one done. Pretty happy with it. Bunch of little worms of clay. I put a bunch of uh, copperhead BBs in there to look like rivets, like when the lock is assembled and put together. I use a little flathead screwdriver to poke little holes around the key lock hole. Um, I dragged it across the clay to make it look like little, uh, like the key had hit the lock over the years and somebody used it. But I think this guy's done. Put him aside to bake, and then we'll start on another one. All right, so I got one lock done. I glued one whole sheet down with Baker Bond across the lock. Did some little curly decoratives. Used some copperhead BBs to put in as decorative elements. And I just gave it all a quick sand, and uh, I made a little line in it, like a lock would have. I just put a ruler up against it and dragged a, um, a pin tool across, and then I took my uh, tool etch machine and ran it down to open the seam up a little bit so it looks like a seam and I'm pretty happy with it so we'll call this guy done went ahead and took the tombstone lock I had made the template earlier I did the same thing I took a sheet of uh, super sculpey flattened it out rolled it across I took this little tool I made it has a little tiny skull in it and I glued it to the end of a little quarter inch dowel rod a little skull cabochon and then I just made a bunch of dents in it so they look like their skull imprinted. And then I just threw it in the oven. I got that baked and then I came back and I put a border on it. I sculpted a little demon skull for it. Put a lock uh, keyhole in the center, made a little decorative element. Same thing, I put a ruler up against it, dragged the pin across the side, used my tool engraving tool uh, to just go ahead and open the line up so it looks like it's a separate panel on the back of the lock. And I think the only thing else I'm gonna do to this is I'm gonna glue some uh, little tiny squares I have to the side. They're a little, I don't know if they're a stir stick or my daughter took from Starbucks or what the hell they are. But I got a whole bunch of these little guys cut. So I'm gonna glue these along the side to look like little uh, rods or something had gone through the lock. And then I'm gonna go ahead, after I get those done, I'm gonna work on the demon skull. I'm gonna roll a sheet of uh, clay out. I'm gonna cover it. I'm going to put a texture on it, then I'm going to bake it, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to start putting the actual uh, uh, demon elements on there and start uh, sculpting him out so we can get another one done. So we're basically two down, minus a couple more little decorative elements, and then we're going to go ahead and work on the demon skull. Okay, we got the tombstone skull done. Glued on a bunch of little squares, look like pins or pieces running through the lock to hold some of the uh, internal guts. So we'll call him done. This guy's about done. I may add a little something, don't know. We got the demon skull ready to go. I went ahead and I'll brush out some bacon bond across the whole surface of this. I got a piece of clay flat nut laid out. I'll make my texture and then I'll bake this so I have something to sculpt on. So I'm gonna brush this out and then I'll lay this whole guy right across the top so that it stays down on this uh, wooden block. Oh, that's not good. All right. Let's brush it out. I want to get real good on them edges. All right. Real good. Go over the edges. Won't hurt anything. It'll all get sanded back later. Looks like we're pretty thoroughly covered. Go ahead and lay him down. Then I'll smash this down, and then I'll trim the clay off, and I'll texture it, pre-bake it, and I got something to sculpt on. All right, I got everything kind of uh, based out in Sculpey Original. I'm running out of Super Sculpey, so I want to use this to sculpt on top of these. So all these guys I just made a base for. This is my wishbone lock. I use some, uh, uh, what do you call it, Limax Town, a uh, little concrete pavement to get a little stamp a little pattern on this one. And the demon lock, 
I went ahead and just used a uh, wire brush and my fingertips and a little bit of uh, tin foil to mash that down some. I'm going to put some little spikes here and glue them in the spot. But that's a base I can go ahead and sculpt on, so I'm pretty happy with him. And then for the sun and moon lock, I went ahead and just dimpled the surface real bad so it looks like the moon using a ball stylus and just kind of pressing out my fingertips so it's not any rough edges, but that paint will sink down in there and look real good. So I'm ready to go ahead and throw all these guys in the oven. They're all based out. And then once they come out of the oven, I can start sculpting the details on top of these things and they'll be done. All right, so I got the demon out of the oven. I cut some little quarter inch dowels and shaved them down with a pencil sharpener. So I got some spikes to put in the little demon locks, uh, little demon locks around his face area. So now I can go ahead and go back to original Super Sculpey. And I got the demon's face here. I'm gonna trace it out on some uh, clay. I'm gonna cut the top and the bottom out, place it on there, and I'm gonna go back and start to uh, trim this out. All right, fresh out of the oven. The little demon lock is done. He's still kind of smoking hot. Got them all molded up. Use some bacon bond to put the little spikes in place. He's good to go. I'm gonna let him cool off. And then I think I'm gonna do uh, probably the sun and moon lock uh, next maybe. So we got another one down. This one's ready to be seal coated. And then we'll throw some, uh, yeah, I'll probably put a coat of satin clear on it. And uh, that one's ready for molding. All right, so the stars and moon lock has been baked. It's been baked once for the background, twice for some of the details. I gotta finish up making the little rays of the sun. And then I'll put that guy in the oven for the last time. And thank God I baked it on foil, cause man, that sucker leaks some pine tar. But this one's about done. I'll finish up the details on this one. The wishbone lock has uh, got its first bake. I'll go ahead and put the details on that one. And then we'll finish both these guys up, final bake them, then throw a base coat on them and then get ready to mold these guys. All right, so I'm gonna do these final details of the wishbone. I've got some uh, little quarter inch, little mushroom uh, looking calves that I think go on furniture to cover screw holes and stuff. So I've got a quarter inch hole, drill them both atop of the little wishbone area. I think I'm gonna sink one of these little guys in there, like so. Then maybe do a little detail around with some uh, clay I've got rolled out. And then I've already got a little key escutcheon cut. I'll do some uh, bacon bond. I'll brush that on and glue that into place. And uh, I'll basically just put the details on. Maybe I'll use a bit another one of these at the bottom and do some kind of pattern. Something like that maybe. I'm going to go ahead and get all these details on there, get it figured out. And I'm going to throw this thing in the oven, get it baked for the last time. That way it'll be done. And then uh, I'll show you the other locks. I've got everything kind of... Uh, sealed up and uh, base coated and this will be the last guy I base coat. Uh, then after this guy is done I'll get him sealed up and base coated in one color so I can kind of see all details all together and then um, we'll get ready to make some molds for this thing uh, to put some uh, stuff together and prep these things to be molded in silicone. Alright, so look at this guy, the wishbone lock out of the oven. He's done, he's got his second bake, all the little details in there. Put some of those little copperhead BBs on there. And this guy I'm going to call done. These are all the locks so far. I made this guy up. Uh, same thing, block of wood. Clay on top, baked it one time. He's good to go, so I threw in one little wild card. Um, everybody else has been baked. I put a base coat on everything, did a little light sand just to show some uh, detail and make sure I don't want to change anything. This is the tombstone lock. Backs are flat. I'll end up flat molding these. Uh, this one I went ahead and my little uh, lock I went ahead and put some uh, Loctite blue tack on and you can use any tack it doesn't matter they make green they make white um, I just rolled it out into really thin little ropes just like clay went ahead and stuffed it on the back side went around the whole perimeter because I'm going to flat mold this guy so with all the rest of the locks being done these guys are all ready for molding I just got to make uh, sure I got enough room for them. So I went to the dollar store, I grabbed a bunch of these cheap boxes at uh, the Dollar Tree. This guy is thin enough that I can use the lid to mold in, but the other big locks I'm going to end up using the lower boxes. So I'll end up putting these guys in here, going around the whole back side with the blue tack, putting them in the box, smashing them down, and then those guys will get molded in the box so I can make molds out of everything. 
So I'm going to use the lid since this guy's shallow. This guy's already been kind of roped off. I got blue tack all the way around. I'll kind of uh, press them down into place. I'll smash them down and then I'll cut the box and fold it up. I'll glue the corners in so that should give me a nice little mold to go ahead and pour silicone over and I'm going to mold each and every one of these locks so I can make copies of it. So all the locks are here. Now I just got to go around and put blue tech on the back of each and every one of them and get them set for molding. So the backs really don't matter what they look like. One last look, this is the sun and moon lock. This is the little demon head lock. Just put a coat of like a, a brownish aged uh, bronze on him or something. Here's the original one I started with, the little mimic lock. This guy will end up molding like this, not flat backed. This is my little wild card I threw in, little skull. Little looks like sort of like a little lich face or something. This is the one that just came out of the oven. It's dry now, it's cooled off. And this is the tombstone lock. He's ready to go. All these are set for molding. So I'm going to go ahead and blue tack all these, get them in the boxes, and then I'm going to have to get a whole lot of silicone to make a bunch of molds of these guys, and we'll start popping out some duplicates. Okay, YouTube, so it's been many months since I got the uh, locks done. Uh, this is what we started with. I went ahead and made a trial mold out of him out of silicone 20T. I just uh, dropped my lock in there. That's what I made my mold in, so it's just a little mop and glow uh, cup is all it is. So this one will have a like a 3D uh, mold. It'll be uh, stopped at the top. I went ahead and got the rest of the sculpts all base coated, so every single one is in their box. They are siliconed and taped together. So that's the little demon's lock. Uh, this is going to be the skull lock. He's all good to go. Um, this is the, t the tombstone style lock. This one's ready next. Uh, the sun and moon lock. I just base coated this in copper after uh, baking it and tweaking a little bit, do a little bit of sanding on them. So they're basically all cleaned up and ready to mold. This is like the little, uh, I don't know, like fancy style lock. And then my last one is the more uh, tombstone style lock. But uh, this guy, I went ahead and cut up some older molds. I had some flash and used that to fill in, so I used less silicone. So now that the locks are all each base coated and they're ready to be molded, my test mold came out pretty good. Um, this is my original. So you guys saw me sculpt all these. In the next video, uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pour molds on all these. We're gonna pop model molds and then we're gonna start making some locks. So that way we can see a final product. Uh, I think it's gonna, be all, it's gonna be too much for one video. So we're gonna end the video here. When we pick up in part two, we're gonna have silicone and we're gonna start making some molds of locks. So I hope you guys follow me in the next one. You get a chance, go check out my brothers in the trio of terror, Vic Springston and Dave at the Weird Kid Show channel. Uh, we're just going to be cranking out projects till Halloween, so if you guys are making something or building your own locks, hey, share it on the Cobwebs and Candlesticks Facebook page or the Trio of Terror Facebook page. Show us what you're building. So I hope you guys come back for part two. Thanks so much for watching. Until I see you again, keep it evil.